Welcome to the Soul Seeker Podcast. I'm your host, Sam Kabert, and this year marks the fifth birthday of the Soul Seeker Podcast. I started this pod back in 2019 when I was taking my first steps on the path of remembering. And at the time, the tagline for the show was a journey of self discovery. A year later, it became a journey of remembering. Yet, what I know now is back then I was still seeking. And what I've come to know now is that it's the journey of seeking that brings us the silent, slow stillness of acceptance. And therein lies our own innate wisdom. It's my mission now to eradicate the glorification of hustle culture, as it was my drive in entrepreneurship that led to a greater whole. And that's because I was outsourcing my sovereignty rather than looking within. So let this be your invitation to take a deep breath in and remember that at any time we can shift our thoughts and our feelings to create the outer world in which we wish to live. Soul Seekers, it's time to grow. Let's go. All right, welcome back to another episode of the Soul Seeker Podcast. Before we jump in, as always, we're going to slow things down a bit here with some light breath work. I, I you know, uh, this will be interesting because we're going to talk about breath work, and we'll really get into this in this episode because this is just three simple breaths. So, for those of you that are returning listeners to the pod, you know what to do, and for anyone new. Just, you know, if you're driving or doing anything where you can't close your eyes, you can always breathe with us. Just don't close your eyes. And for the rest of us, Dave, you, myself, listeners, we'll go ahead and close our eyes, finding a comfortable seat. Just beginning to slow things down, feeling your feet on the floor, sitting up straight, and through the nose, inhaling all the way up, sipping in a bit more air at the top. Hold the breath here and audible sigh, let it go. Another big inhale all the way up, letting the belly expand and bringing that breath all the way up to the top, sipping in a bit more air here. Hold the breath and audible sigh. And one last one, letting the belly expand as you inhale through your nose all the way up. Sipping in a bit more air at the top. Holding the breath here. Just allow yourself to be here. And exhale, let it go. And just flickering the eyes back open. And here we are, Dave Gieselman. I am so stoked to talk with you, my friend. It's been awesome to connect with you over these past few weeks or however long it's been. Dave, welcome to the show. Well, thank you so much. It's uh, it's, uh, it's an honor to be here, man. It's it's great to talk to you again. Yeah. So let's just dive straight in. Like you're, you're, you and I are so similar, right? Like for anyone watching on YouTube or seeing a clip or anything, you can see Dave and you can see on his scre- screen, it says, just effing breathe. I won't say the whole word, but you know what the word is. And it's funny because so often uh, that's kind of like my um, my thing, like just breathe, right? I think I, no, I think I know I did a play on Nike's logo, like uh, just do it. I have a Nike swoosh where it says, just feel it. You know, this is important. So anyways, Dave, just jumping straight into it. How did you go from chef to breathwork guy? And while you're telling us this story, please like tell us everything about your career in working at Michelin star restaurants and all the things too. And mm, for sure. So uh, it's a thank you so much. It's a it's been a wild journey. It's been it's been super cool. Uh, so I began cooking super young. Um, I fell in love very, very young and I was, I was fortunate to, to have, he, you know, humans around me who didn't feel the need to sort of all the alter that trajectory who, who just, who just supported it. And so I started cooking really, really young, um, uh, here in Los Angeles 
and I cook professionally for for thirty years. For those of you who don't know me, uh, I do. Uh, I cook professionally for thirty years, and now I do coaching and speaking and and breathwork uh, facilitation. And I I started out, you know, in 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 high school or whatever, like like, like so many people. And uh, the best career advice I was ever given, I was trying to figure out what a chef's career arc looked like. And somebody told me that if you want to make money, work for people who have it. And so that made sense to me. And so as soon as I could reliably get to Beverly Hills, I was working in Beverly Hills because uh, that's where that's where people have money around here. And so I just I was working in these sort of high intensity kitchens. You know, I was at I was at Spago. I was at the Peninsula. I was at these you know, kind of really, you know, they're heads of state and celebrities and and uh it was just a, it was just an intense environment. And I, like many young cooks, attempted better living through chemistry. I attempted to regulate my nervous system uh, chemically, and that did not work for me in the long term. In my early 20s, uh, I had to get sober. I like it was it was just it was just no longer one of my one of my options. I, I couldn't I couldn't continue to, to f- try to figure out how to uh, regulate my nervous system chemically anymore. Um, and so my environment didn't change, but my coping mechanism had to. So I went diving into flow states, neuroscience, peak performance, uh, mindfulness, meditation, breath work. I began doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu and uh, Spartan races, tough mutters, like anything I could get my hands on that was really sort of challenging that you had to be present for, that you had to be like completely aware. You can't, you can't take your eye off your opponent. You can't let your mind wander when you're doing Brazilian jiu-jitsu. You get your arm torn out. Right. When you're doing like sparred races and tough motors, you, your, your mind really can't wander. You, you, you got to be focused on, on what you're doing. So being able to really take control of my physiology, really take control of where, where fear came from and where stress came from and, and my, my internal responses to highly intense situations just kind of became a, it almost gamified. Right. It, it, it almost became the, the, the challenge, the game. How do I enter more and more and more intense environments and stay cooler and cooler and cooler in professional kitchens, uh, as well as, you know, offices and, and businesses everywhere else? The when, when pressure gets dialed up, the, cur- the coolest guy in the room, the calmest guy, person in the room is in charge, uh, whether they're the leader or not, whether they're uh, in charge or not human beings naturally look for the calmest person in the room and and sort of gravitate toward that that person being able to be that in highly charged situations when you know we're we're catering the the the, the governor's ball at the oscars or or whether we're, we have the, the 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 first lady in the dining room or whatever the the situation is the ability to to keep your keep yourself together under what what would you know kind of break most people became fun and exciting and a, and a really cool uh source of uh, of excitement for me so was there like one big aha moment or experience you had with breathwork specifically with breathwork specifically when i i'd always done uh, sort of Wim Hof and and i'd gotten introduced to to yogic breathing and pranayama and and sort of Kundalini, and, and so just breathing was was really a part of of what I've been doing. It says just just effing breathing. I've been shouting that at cooks for thirty years, right? Just you know, set everything you're working on down. Take a step back. Take three deep breaths. Exactly what we did. I love that we did the physiological sigh uh, at the beginning. It is easily one of the most powerful breaths that you can take to 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 level set. And it wasn't until I left professional kitchens in 2017 and I, I got introduced to sort of flow state breath work. I, these sort of longer, longer format, psychedelic type breath work modalities. I'd been coaching for about 20 years. Uh, I'd been, you know, speaking and I'd been talking about these subjects in 2017. I left professional kitchens to coach and to, and to speak full time. And then I got introduced to, to this type of breath work and my trajectory changed. It, it just became different. Uh, I wanted to use this modality in my coaching. I wanted to bring 
these this type of breath work to people, it was so transformative for me that in 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 relation to my first session of of deeply uh deep flow state breath work every, everything about what i wanted and how i pictured my future changed in an instant and, and i've been moving in that direction ever since so uh just if i'm hearing you correctly you had a breath work journey is that what you're saying yeah 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 i was in 2017 i was at this retreat this this marketing retreat i'm a great cook and i'm a great coach and i'm easily the world's shittiest marketer and i if I'm, if I'm going to figure out how to, how to make a living doing this, I need to figure out how to sell it. Because uh, if you can't sell it, then, then, then back to kitchens I go. If, and, and so I, I went to this thing and, and one of the coaches there said he was going to take everybody on a, on a journey one, one of the mornings. And I went with this huge chip on my shoulder. Uh, I was familiar with breath work. I was familiar with, with regulating your nervous system using the breath. But I had never done anything like this. And it was a it was an interesting group of people. It was down in Encinitas, California, which is which is full of it was just full of hippies and, you know, tantric uh, you know, humans and 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 it was a bunch of coaches and a bunch of like really kind of like like eccentric characters, which was which was cool for me. Um and but I went with this this chip on my shoulder uh, because I'm a chef, I'm a pragmatist, right? Like like chummy. Show me. Let's 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 see it. I'm not. Uh, I I love the the spiritual and sort of energetic approach to things, but I don't lead with that. I I I lead with 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 sort of pragmatism. And I laid down, and for the first time in 15 years, I got high as hell. For the first time uh, ever, the breath took me on into a place and and untangled in me. Very, very old stuff, very old sort of belief systems that I got to see that I was still operating from that I had sort of decided years ago were false. And, and I got to see, I was still kind of operating under and, and in this, this one session, I kind of came, you know, what, what I would say through 10 years of therapy in, in sort of one deep, like sort of 15 minute breathwork session. It was incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I, I feel you. I know for me, my first breathwork journey, I literally felt reborn. Um, I remember vibrating, you know, like not even shaking, like straight up vibrating. And then all of a sudden I was coming back into my body. And I, it was a one-on-one -on -one session and hearing the facilitator um, coaching me through it, like the coming back into my body was how I knew I left my body, but I also thought I was I was literally dying because I was just laying there vibrating. And I left that experience as like intense as that sounds, feeling so much lighter. Like for the first time in my life, I understood what it meant to feel light. Like I never understood it before when people would say like they felt light. Um, but to your point, when we're walking around with this baggage, whether we think uh, we've gone through it and let it go, or we don't even know about it. Um, when we do get to that place, it's just so, it's so uh, empowering for lack of a better word. So I'm curious, that was back in 2017 mm -hmm. that when you got that? Okay. Yeah. Now you've probably done a lot of journeys on your own, just like mm -hmm. your own, but also under other people's um, uh, facilitation, whatever. How have you seen for yourself your journeys transform over time? Because a lot of times it can become something where it's like chasing the dragon, just like a drug or a psychedelic medicine. So what does that look like for you in terms of how you approach breathwork journeys for yourself? So it's a, it's a great question. And, and as a, as an addict, right, with, with, with a, a lot of experience and, and, and a deep understanding of, of, of what that looks like to, to, to really kind of chase that dragon, to really kind of chase addiction. Uh, the first time I, I did this work, I came out of it and I went straight up to the guy who asked, who, who facilitated with the addict to me just in full effect. And I'm like, Jill, how often can you do something like that? Right? Because I had, I had just gotten, I had just gotten high as hell. 
right? And so I'm like, so how often can a guy do something like that? Is that something you can do a lot? Can you, is that in every week? Is that in every day? Like how much uh, of that can you do? And the guy looked at me and probably knew exactly what he was dealing with, probably knew exactly, you know, what, what was coming at him. And he just looked me in the eye and very calmly said, you can't breathe too much, dude. And so I went diving into every breath work thing that I could get my hands on, every YouTube, $40 in a yoga studio, uh, Wim Hof, holotropic, rebirthing, like everything I could get my hands on. There's the, the JP Creamies of the world and, and Watali and all these, all these guys who are kind of traveling around and, 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 and doing this thing. And I went diving into all of it and I learned what I liked. I learned what I didn't like. I learned what, what really kind of took me, took me places and what really didn't. And I ended up going back to this, this guy, what I, what I found. And the most important thing I need to say here is unlike other things in my life, I have never experienced diminished return in breath work. I have never experienced a point where I'm like, well, that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not really getting the, 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 the good, good anymore. You know, like I'm not getting that, I'm, I'm not getting that, that, that big boom, uh, that I'm, that I'm getting. Every journey is different. Every session is different and it, and it reveals, it reveals something different. Uh, you know, I've come to trust that, that everybody gets what they need out of a session, regardless of whether it's what they wanted, right. Whether it was what they were, we were hoping for, but we all get what we, what we need what emerges is what needs to emerge for us. And I yet to find uh, a, a diminished return or a, a sort of like, like a rebounding, like a snapback. If I don't get to do it, you know, every week or, or, or a few times a month or whatever, I don't go into this crazy place. Uh, so there's no, there's no degradation of condition when I don't. There is only an improvement of condition when I do, which is hugely different than than the substances that I experienced. You know, there was, you know, if if I stopped doing it, like I would get, I would get sick, I would get crazy, I would get nervous, and and just everything would all systems would crumble. My my mental, my emotional. Uh, my spiritual, every system would be kind of begin to crumble. And when I don't do breath work for a while, I, everything just kind of remains the same. And then I'll do it again and go, oh, right. I love that shit. Like, but, like there's the, there's the, the, the thing that, that, that fires me up. So that's really what has kind of informed this for me is that there's no diminished return and no no degradation of condition when I don't do it. And so there's no warning to give people, look, if you, if you start you got to keep going or, or whatever. So there's no, there's no like hooks you can throw onto people. It's just how, how free do you want to be? Yeah, absolutely. So also when you started to seek out different modalities and forms of breath work, um, you mentioned that there were things that you liked and things that you didn't like. Can you go back to that time and remember some of the things that you saw that you didn't like so much? Sure. Um, yeah, a, a couple that, that come um, um, immediately to mind is, you know, we're, we'd be in this like deep sort of uh, session and, and the facilitator would have, you know, sort of would like sort of crescendo the, the thing and then have everybody do this like primal scream. And one of the things that I have, like, I don't do that in, in my own facilitation. And, and it's, it's really kind of important to me that, that I don't is that anyone who was not feeling sort of that crescendo or wasn't there and everybody in the room just does this scream. You just spiked everybody's cortisol. Like everybody just went into a stress response. Uh, even, even in the scream requires a, requires a stress response. And so they may have been in flow state, but even, but even that, that scream might have felt cathartic. It just introduced, it just introduced a, a cortisol spike. And, and I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of that. Um, one of the things I, I don't do and I, and let me, 
let me make sure I'm saying this uh, out loud and maybe make sure I'm, I'm being clear. I'm not trying to yuck anybody's yum. If that is the way you do it, that is the way you do it. If that is what you like, then, then, do, then do what you like. I spent too many years in professional kitchens to yuck somebody's yum. I'm not here to tell you what you should like, what should work, what doesn't. I'm, I'm talking about what I like. I, I love and respect all breathwork facilitators and I love and respect all modalities. Uh, and if, I, if there's something about it I don't like or don't understand, then it is something about me that doesn't quite resonate with that. And not that it is harmful, dangerous, uh, you shouldn't do it, uh, anything else. So let, let me just make sure that just because something goes without saying doesn't mean it shouldn't be said. Uh, the, the other one is I don't touch people. I don't, I don't touch people. I, I, I hold space. I, I will walk around the space as people are breathing. I will sit next to somebody, but I don't touch people who are in their, in their, their journey. And it, it's mostly because low and my modality is, is, is purposed around putting you into flow state, into transient hypofrontality in about seven minutes. And, and most people drop in, uh, in, in roughly seven minutes in, in this particular, it's, it's just designed to, that's, that's what this modality does, it puts you in, in flow state. And flow follows focus, right? And so if you are in, if you are in that flow state, you know, your, your, your body and your mind are processing information at about a hundred times their normal rate. You are in transient hypofrontality. Uh, the moment, the moment I touch you, you're immediately yanked out of it. You are immediately brought back to, to a, a, a state where the outside, where the outside world is now influencing this, this like kind of sphere that you're in. Uh, having having your own experience, and because I just pulled your focus away, I just pulled you straight out of uh, I pulled you straight out of flow state, and I want you in there absolutely as long as I can hold you. It's it's transient hypofrontality. It doesn't it doesn't last real long. You can cultivate it, but not capture it. And what I want is for people to to have access to that to that state for as long as they can. Yeah, the the touch thing um, really resonates, you know, and it's so it's so subjective, you know. It's uh, kind of I've been in uh, yoga teacher training where someone was crying and processing something in a sharing circle, and someone else brought over a box of tissues, and the person that was crying uh, got really upset over it, and then we had a big uh, conversation about letting people be in their process. And I would have never known this, but some people feel like when you offer them a tissue when they're crying, it's telling them that it's not okay to have those tears and they need to wipe them away. For me, like if I'm crying and someone gives me a tissue or something like that, I'm like, thank you. Like I don't mm. feel that way. And it just goes to show same thing with touch and how we're holding space and not energetically holding space, but physically holding space with breath work is. I know in my breathwork training, we were taught to do hands-on touch and mm. the way I don't actually do that in my sessions. Um, every now and then, maybe a little, little, little bit, um, but not the way we were taught. And it's it's just so subjective. And I think what's most important, at least for me, is like what feels most in alignment for me as a facilitator. And if I'm trying to utilize, say, hands-on touch, because I think that's the way it should be done and that's the way I was taught to do it. But then I don't actually feel that's appropriate given a circumstance, then that's going to change my energy, right? But then I know, and sure you do too, right? There's plenty of people that are just so like, their love language is, is touch. <laughs> <laughs> like I've had to work so hard on being comfortable with other people touching me, <laughs> you know, and like having my space. So I, I totally get like, I, I can think of a few friends that are very touchy and they do breath work too. It's like, yeah, that works for you, but that wouldn't work for me, you know, to your right. point of respecting other people's models of the world, essentially. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. One of the, one of the things around that, the example you gave, you know, bringing somebody a tissue, 
all of a sudden it's now about, it's now about me doing something for you. It's now about, you know, like there's, there's a, a disruption instead of you just ha- allowing, uh, uh, allowing somebody to have their experience like, like that your what I found is that most the the people who will grab somebody a tissue or they will try to comfort or try to be there, it's because they are uncomfortable with somebody else's emotions. Like, I, like I, I need to, I need to do something. I gotta, I gotta somehow fix this. And most of the time, if if you are uncomfortable in the presence of somebody having an emotional thing, this is. This is where you need to lean in, right? This is where I need to lean in. If I am uncomfortable with somebody's emotions, okay, it's it not being expressed in a dangerous in a in a, in a, in, a, in a dangerous way, but somebody's in a complete breakdown, right? Why why do I need to feel the need to 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 get them something? Why do I need to to why do I feel the need that that this moment needs to be solved? Like needs to be solved. Needs they need they don't need comfort. They need they need to express and the moment and just like touching somebody the moment i now stand up walk across the room walk back across the room and and introduce a foreign object introduce some sort of intervention into into what is an experience i think i think we just changed that experience so that i can feel okay so that i can feel that i i i did something for them rather than hold space and, and, and allow someone to to have their experience. When I teach breathwork facilitators, one of the most important aspects of of my certification uh, is that the, the skill of a, of a breathwork facilitator is not in how many modalities they know, not in how well they put a, a session together, not in, in, but the, the real skill of a, of a breathwork facilitator is their ability to hold space, right? Their ability to allow whoever is in front of them, be it one person or 300, to have, to have their experience and know that, that their experience is okay, they are safe to have it, that they're, they're not experiencing something uh, uh, unusual or something, you know, they shouldn't feel awkward about having their experience. And being able to hold that space is the true skill of a, of a breathwork facilitator. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That's so well said. And I'd love to transition a little into your style of breathwork. And before we do as well, I, I said at the, the jump of this pod that we'll uh, talk about what breathwork is and what it is in a, a little bit, at least. You know, for me, I feel like uh, breathwork is such a big topic that I like to turn it into two sides. Like one, there's breathwork exercises for rest and digest, like what we did earlier. And that's like anything that's going to be just a couple of minutes to get you into a state of calm and ease and rest and digest. Then there are breathwork journeys, which is what we've been talking about, which is specifically to dig stuff up so that we can release it, get to that flow state you're talking about into a place of ease. So with all of that said, you mentioned that you drop people into flow states in seven minutes. I'd love to hear a little bit about um, your process and what a breathwork journey looks like uh, in terms of the the actual uh, mechanics of it. And sure, it's a great question. And and yeah, breathwork is such a, a like a broad sort of you know broad topic. It's like saying yoga, you know, and and you know to 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 address something simply as yoga. You know that you you just it's such an enormous umbrella that, that that you just that you just said. So, you know, breathwork is uh, for those of you who for those who don't know, breathwork is simply uh, a focused, intentional breathing uh, done to bring about a particular outcome. And there are many, many outcomes that you could breathe uh, to achieve. You know, there you can you know do breathwork to achieve lower breaths. There's breath work you could achieve to, you could do to achieve only breathing through your nose or only through your mouth. You, there's breath work you can, that would, the outcome being, uh, being able to hold your breath longer, free divers in, in, you know, the Polynesians, you know, and, and, and free divers, you know, develop these, 
these really uh, sort of complex uh, breathing systems that enabled them to free dive for five, six, seven, nine minutes at a time. Uh, and so there's lots of different outcomes and breathwork is simply using the breath to, to a- achieve those outcomes in, in different ways. Limitless flow is a breathwork modality designed to specifically bring about uh, transient hypofrontality to bring about flow state. What a, it was developed um, by trying to really zero in on, on what created that particular cognitive, cognitive state. And I'm a, I'm a student of, of Mihai Csikszentmihalyi and Stephen Kotler, uh, uh, Jamie Wheel, uh, a lot of these guys who, who didn't invent flow state, they didn't coin the term flow state. Uh, what they did is they, they just kind of, they brought the knowledge of it into, uh, in, into sort of awareness and, and codified it uh, in some really great ways. And so there's, there's about 17 different flow triggers and flow follows focus. And, and the triggers include a uh, like deep focus, uh, a complete concentration on, on what you're doing, uh, something that is, is immersive, um, something that, that you have complete control over. There's a skills challenge sort of balance uh, that is a flow trigger if you're at a, at a, a skills challenge balance. So you're, you're operating just, just above your sort of current skill level. Uh, and you have to add to kind of reach into, uh, something. There is a, the, the trigger of, of it has to, uh, come with some risk. Uh, it has to, to, to come with, with, with a, a certain amount of risk, you know, surfing, snowboarding, free solo climbing, uh, you know, looking dumb, breathing, you know, passing out all these things, you know, sort of create sort of risk, uh, things. And so there's, there's 17 of these different flow triggers, 22, depending on how you talk to, but, um, there's 17 different flow triggers. And once you line up five to seven of the most human beings drop into transient hypofrontality, transient, meaning it doesn't last real long, hypo meaning slower or less than frontality, referring to the prefrontal cortex. This is the newest, most human part of your brain. Uh, and it's, it's about down-regulating that part of your brain. This is the part of your brain that's responsible for your understanding of time. It's all your executive functions. It's, uh, long-range planning risk assessment. It's the self-referential thinking all of your self-consciousness, the voice of the critic, the voice that follows you around and tells you that you suck, um, the, the part of your brain that scrolls Instagram and compares your shitty life to everybody else's awesome life, right? Like that's, that's the part of your brain that we are very intentionally kind of quieting. Um, and it's, it's similar to it's runners called runner's high. It's what extreme sports athletes call the zone. You know, when you catch the barrel of a wave, it gets very quiet in there. Right? When you are sailing down the side of a mountain uh, with a couple of popsicle sticks tied to your feet uh, and action and awareness have completely merged, your brain is processing an information at a hundred times its normal rate, it gets very quiet in there. You know, there's, there's all sorts of, you're so immersed in what you're doing that everything else has space to sort of breathe and to untangle and to unwind. And so the, the limitless flow modality is built, built on that. And so, uh, in terms of, in terms of, of what it looks like, it's, it's basically five parts. It is a, there's a sort of progressive sort of relaxation. We bring people slowly into this sort of relaxed state. People lay down for this. This is not a modality that you would do sitting up. It's the modality that you would do sitting at your desk or driving a car. Um, you block out time for this. Ideally, you're either present in the room with me or you're, you're wearing headphones um, because I want you immersed. I recommend people wear eye masks uh, so that you're not trying to keep your eyes closed. It's just you're now just in this environment. So there's a progressive relaxation that just kind of slows your, your heart rate down and allows you to be present. And then there's the three work rounds. And each work round looks roughly the same. It's 11 minutes of focused, intentional breathing. Uh, there is 
at the end of that 11 minutes of sublimation where we take a big, uh, great big breath and then release that breath and hold without inhale. And then there's a retention where we take a great big deep breath and hold that air in. Uh, and, and so each work round has these three pieces to it. Uh, and we repeat that three times. And so the first round uh, is focused on bellows breath, uh, which is similar to like breath of fire. It's a quick double inhale followed by a release exhale. Uh, circular connected breathing looks like uh, it looks like circular connected breathing. Uh, it looks like the transformational breathing practice. It's a quick double inhale followed by a release exhale, and you do that for eleven minutes. The second round is warrior's breath, that, which oh, is real quick. For the bellows is that a passive exhale? It's a passive exhale. It's just a release. It's just a release exhale. Um, some traditions uh, ask you to to do a belly, then chest, and then release. So you know, fill your belly with 80% of your inhale, fill your chest with, with the, the other 20%. Uh, and then, and then it's a, yeah, it's a passive, just a release exhale. It's a little left brain for me, right? Like, cause now I'm paying attention to whether my belly's going up or my chest is going up or whether, where the breath is going. And now I'm, and now I'm, I'm focused on, on the mechanics of it. And whether I'm doing it right, rather than just allowing myself to be in, in an immersive process, right? So the second round is, is warrior's breath, which is just deep in and deep out. It's like, uh, like Wim Hof breathing or, 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 or any of these other sort of, uh, sympathetic, uh, breaths it, it, because it's, it's designed to drive your nervous system up it's designed to push you, uh, out of rest and digest, it's designed to push you into your sympathetic nervous system, into fight or flight, all you know, and, and activate those physiological systems. And so we'll breathe, we'll do warrior's breath for 11 minutes, then followed by that sublimation. Deep breath in, release, hold without air, retention, great big deep breath in, and a hold as long as you can. And then the third round is back to bellows breath, that in, in, out, in, in, out, uh, the quick double inhale, release, passive exhale. Uh, and then the fourth round is a suspension or savasana. Uh, this is where by the time we get here, you are, you are now in a, in a different place. You are now in an, in an altered state of consciousness. During all of this, so that's the, like the sort of physical aspects of a, of a limitless flow session. That is what you're going to be tasked with, with doing. During that process, during the three work rounds, there's always the sort of internal aspect that, that we address. And it is always establishing, releasing, and then visioning, right? So we allow ourselves to come into this moment and we set aside everything that, that we kind of brought in and, and kind of just kind of clear the decks and make space Anything that's going to come up to come up. This is where we get to, you know, stand behind the waterfall and be the, be the observer of our thoughts and our emotions without being the, the thinker or the feeler of our thoughts or emotions, just allowing and, and observing what comes up. The second round is, is where we release and it's, and it's uh, based on really this, this part is based on uh, a bunch of, uh, uh, first people's uh, sweat lodges uh, that I uh, I have been honored to to be invited into, and and one of the one of the the aspects in these sweat lodges that I I was in was this was this releasing of, of that which did not serve, and and it was very very powerful every time I did it. This I am carrying this thing, this belief, this habit, this this system, this story, this whatever it is that is no longer serving me. It, it it may have at one point. It, it came from somewhere. I wouldn't keep doing. I wouldn't have started doing it if it didn't if it didn't serve me at some point. But once we're in a flow state and we can ask ourselves, what is it time to let go of? When people are in that state, things begin to untangle and unravel very quickly, and you can have this big sort of purge of old beliefs and old systems and old habits, old patterns, old beliefs about who you are and who you're not, what's available to you, what's not available to you. And, and then move forward 
without sort of the those strings and those sort of draggy anchors that 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 carry us that 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 hold us back. And then the third round is is a visioning forward. What if I could if it could look any way I wanted it to look? What would I what would I want it to look like? It's about connecting my energy with the energy of the universe, uh, understanding that that everything that is everything that lights me on fire, everything that that, that lights me up, that 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 sets my soul ablaze, that 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 creates energy and excitement for me, is there for a reason, and it's there for me to follow. And 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 if it wasn't for me, it wouldn't be there because it wouldn't make sense for it to be there. Why would why would any any universe, any any god, any anything, put something in me that that pulled me forward and pulled me in a direction so powerfully that it was the only thing that I really wanted to do or think about or or involve myself with if that was not the direction that I was supposed to go, if that was not for me, it it, it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense. There's no waste in universal or energetic economy. It wouldn't it wouldn't make sense to do that. And so the and so then being we focus on that. So there's establishing, releasing, and then sort of visioning forward. And then the the suspension just allows whatever decisions got made, whatever next steps are to kind of crystallize. People describe the 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 things that they've been working on. They've been kind of Rubik's cubing in their head for the last, you know, X amount of time, kind of locking into place on them. And 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 now it feels very clear what their next steps are and 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 where where they need to to put their energy. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for walking us through it. So I'm curious uh for like people that come to your sessions and are new to breath work and they get excited kind of how you were previously. Um do you have any recommendations for people in terms of like a good daily practice? Mm, absolutely. Uh I love uh I love Wim Hof. I really do. Uh, I am not a I am not a Wim Hof trained practitioner. I am not a Wim Hof facilitator. Um, that that's not that's not my modality. And once again, I appreciate the hell out of Wim. Right? He, Wim brought breathwork into Western awareness. Right? It's and and you know and it and it does so much. And you can go you can go deep dive on him. Uh, or, or you can kind of stay at the surface. He's got a he's got a, a a great app. But look, if you wake up in the morning and the first thing you do is three rounds of thirty breaths, followed by uh, you know a, a, a hold without air, and then a hold with air, and you do three rounds of that. You just lit your brain up for the day, and I could not advocate for the the use of Wim Hof or some other similar modality. There's a, lots of great modalities out there, but beginning your day with like eight minutes of focused, intentional breathing, you know, eight minutes of sun salutations with with uh, with a, a physiological side at the top, right? With a, with a physiological side built into it, you, you, you could do a whole lot. You could do a whole lot worse. It is the daily practice. So there's three types of breath work that I teach. One is intervention style breathing. I am in my moment of challenge. I am in my moment of panic. My, my emotions have gotten the best of me. I, my, my physiology feels out of control. My emotions, my mind feels out of control. I need something right now. And so I teach two or three different types of breathing. The physiological size one, uh, box breathing is another, uh, vagal breathing is another, is, you know, and it's just things you can do right now in this moment. So this your daily practice types of breath work. The Wim Hof, uh, the clarity breathing, 4462 breathing that you could do at your desk or in traffic or or work in 10 minutes a day here and there to to kind of keep your own breathwork practice at the forefront of of your awareness at the forefront of your habits and they they kind of keep you calm uh, and then there's the the longer form uh sort of psychedelic uh uh 
the 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 deeper uh, therapeutic uh, flow state sort of practices. But I I think I I break them down into three categories of of intervention, daily practice, and then long form uh, stuff. Amazing. But I I love the the Wim Hof. I think it's terrific. Yeah. About. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Wim as well, and I use his 11 May uh, YouTube video uh, most mornings, to be honest. Uh, I would use my own, but I feel like it's a little weird to <laughs> use my own. With you, you can't drive the bus and ride the bus at the same time. You either are the driver or you're the rider, and you cannot be both. Totally. Yeah, so uh, Wim Hof does have his app. Um, I find the, when I used to use the app, it would pull me out to like click the thing to go next. So I mm. just will use the YouTube for anyone that wants that. Uh, easy technique that I like a lot what, that I do on my own at the beach in the morning is just a 10 count, 10 second hold, 20 count, 20 second hold, 30 count, 30 second hold. It takes, you know, maybe about three minutes. And then from there, meditate for about five minutes, jump in the ocean, boom. And um, for anyone that wants more on breath work, I have my breath club. With that, there's a bunch of pre-recorded uh, visualization, breath work exercises and visualizations. They're also free on the podcast. So you guys can check those out. And you can also breathe with Dave every Saturday, most Saturdays, I should say. Tell us about your uh, Saturday breath work sessions. So the... Every Saturday, I have a uh, a public open breathwork session. Uh, I will say they are they are most Saturdays. Some some weeks I'm traveling and I just I can't I can't figure out how to how to you know get it get it together. Um, but you can I will make sure the the link to this is in uh, to to register is is in the the the, the show notes. Um, but it is a ninety minute session. It is the full limitless flow session. You can join me either in Highland Park, Los Angeles, or you can join me online. If you register for a ticket, uh, you get 72-hour access to the recording, which means that if 10 a.m. on Saturday morning doesn't work for you, uh, get the get the registration, register for the ticket. You'll get the you'll get the the link to the recording. And Sunday afternoon or Tuesday or or I think I think it I think it. It expires like Tuesday at midnight or something. Uh, but you have you have you know basically three days to to go through this to to go through this modality on on your own uh, in your own in your own way. And I am happy to give uh, anyone who can hear this podcast or is watching this YouTube uh, uh, a code, and it'll be in there for come come try it for free. It's you know it's not real expensive to begin with. But come try it for free, and I will be uh, happy to to offer a code to, to to give you free access. And guys, definitely take Dave up on that. I did one of his sessions, and I loved it. I really resonate with his style, which is why he's a guest on the show, right? And to Dave's uh, point earlier in this episode as well, when he did his first journey, trying out everything he could. Don't just breathe with me. Don't just breathe with Wim Hof pre-recorded. Breathe with Dave. I think you mentioned uh, Vitality as well, right? And man, I loved uh, Vitality uh, experience. I went to it twice. Awaken is really good as well. There's so many people out there doing great things. Try it out. See what resonates with you. And from there, you're able to create your own thing. Because I think it's great like doing a pre-recorded um it's a great, great, great when it's a breathwork journey. But when we're talking about like breathing for like 10 minutes, just as a microdose breathwork journey, it gets you started for the day. The best thing you can do is learn how to do that on your own. So as you go throughout the day, you're like, oh, this is how I'm feeling. Now I know these different techniques and I know how they work for me. And then you can apply that in real time without a device. So definitely check out Dave's work. And to that point, that is why the breath work was so important for me, because there's nothing required. It's just like, I don't, I don't, I don't need to take a pill. I don't remember to ha have to remember to have the thing. I don't need to have access to a surfboard and, and the Pacific Ocean. Like I, like, I don't need anything. I have access to everything I needed, which is why the breath was so powerful as a, as a tool for me, both in, in professional kitchens and now to my clients, because you don't need anything. There's the, 
I have everything that I need to find to find what I need to find. 100%. Well, Dave, thank you so much for taking the time to share your wisdom, your story, your approach as it relates to breath work. And I'm sure we'll be talking again. Everyone that's listening, thank you guys for tuning in. And you can find all the links to connect with Dave and the promo code with that link to get your free breathwork journey uh, remote. Or if you live in SoCal, you can see him in person. So Dave, thank you again. I appreciate you coming on the show. Thank you, brother. It's been great to be here.